working on a study right now um, with beef cattle. What can you give us an idea of what you're working on? Well, it, it's it's a bit of an extension of the work that we've been doing with the pork, and that you know, looking at uh, feeding flax and feeding actually sunflower seed as well to try to increase the levels of the, these polyunsaturated fatty acids in, in the beef. And also we're very interested in looking at the levels of their biohydrogenation products that uh, the rune bacteria, they, they modify these polyunsaturated fatty acids and you, you can get some sort of fairly weird and wonderful fatty acids that uh, can get deposited in the beef. So we're trying to see what we can do to adjust some of these levels and, and we're actually trying to see some of the rumen bacterial profiles and see how they change. Like if you have an animal that has a high level of these uh, polyunsaturated fatty acid biohydrogenation products to see if there's a change in the in the rumen bacteria. We're also uh, collaborating with the University of Alberta looking at looking at uh, bioavailability and bioactivity. So looking at, at these uh, different products and disease models and stuff. So it's you know, it's kind of interesting stuff. Yeah, so what's the difference? Why do we have to do a completely new study for beef? How do they digest it differently? Or what are you looking at there? Well, in, in pork, they, they have a, a, a simple single stomach. And in pork, what, actually what you feed is what you get in the tissue. So there's a very good correlation between sort of the, the fatty acids that, that come in to what get deposited into the tissues. In beef and in dairy and other ruminants, it's a little bit different. And that's because when the polyunsaturated fatty acids come in, they come into this, this big rumen, which is just chock full of bacteria. And the bacteria don't actually like the polyunsaturated fatty acids. And so the first thing that they try to do is hydrogenate them. And then you get some of these different a partial hydrogenation products in there that have some of these interesting properties. For example, CLA or one of the isomers of CLA is actually a known anti-carcinogen, whereas the trans fatty acids on a whole are noted to be not very good in terms of your plasma cholesterol levels. But there's actually one of the trans fatty acids in there that's actually good because it's pre a precursor for the CLAs. So, so um, how does this impact producers? So we can kind of change and manipulate how much CLA is in the meat? Yeah, that, that's what we're trying to do. I mean, we're trying to study it. There's some, some of the initial studies where they fed, say, a flax seed or a sunflower seed. If they put it into a high grain diet, then the results weren't, weren't really that good, particularly when you say you feed sunflower seed, you don't get a high level or you don't necessarily get a high level or a good level of, of the good trans fatty acids. You can actually get a, a high level of a, of a different uh, trans fatty acid that might not be very good for you. So. And is it reasonably easy to test to see how much of each is in the meat? It's uh, At this point, it's not particularly easy because the, the work that we do to get a comprehensive fatty acid profile can actually take quite a bit. It takes uh, two GC analyses, two separate analyses, and plus an HPLC analysis. So we get three analyses, and so we have about 10 hours of equipment time tied up trying just to analyze these different things. Because, And the, the reason for that is because uh, it's uh, a lot of these fatty acids are very closely related, and so to be able to separate them, we have to use some fairly uh, very high powered columns. So actually one of the GC columns that we use is actually 100 meters long. And it, it's a capillary column, so the the, uh, the hole in the middle of the column is about the width of a human hair. And so then, you know, we actually, we elute the, the fatty acids coming off of there, they're fatty acid methyl esters, and we elute them with hydrogen gas, and then when they come off the other end, once we separated everything, then, then actually burn it and then it gives us a signal and we use a flame ionization detector to, to detect these things. So, so it's, a, it's a little complicated and actually one of the things that we're trying to do and, and some of the things in the study that we're doing, we're using the near-infrared uh, spectroscopy and that's to be able to take a rapid measurement of the, of the fatty acids. So, oh, okay, so yeah. give us a general idea when we're marketing our beef. Yeah, and so in terms of getting a good level and uh, also to to you know, just in, in one snapshot, get a, a picture of uh, the total fatty acid profile. So, so we have to we have to build the uh, the database for that, and then uh, use that to do uh, versus the you know the the uh, NIR, and then we uh, gener generate a, a calibration equation. So, 
And do you see yeah. the industry going forward with this as well? Well, I, I hope so, certainly. Uh, one thing, you know, in terms of the fatty acid research and the research that we do, I mean, it's not sort of do it one day and then apply it the next. And that's because, you know, even down to the point of, of regulatory uh, compliance or, you know, the, the regulations, and the, it takes quite a while before you can actually make a, a claim for these types of things. Uh, you have to back it all up with solid science and, and you have to really convince the authorities that uh, it's necessary or we should have or be able to make a claim. And really what is necessary is you have to, you have to be, able, be able to make a claim so that you can actually differentiate your product. And, and so you can actually label it appropriately. So, yeah, and yeah. market it to the consumers that want it. Exactly, yeah. Sounds good. So when can we expect the results of this study to be completed? Well, it's a, this one is, is a three-year study, and so we're just close to the end of the second year. So, and we're sort of, maybe we can update you later on. Yeah, <laughs> we'll catch up with you in a year. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Yeah.